Hello and welcome to Xena Warrior Podcast. My name is Vera and I'm joined as always by my two lonely co-hosts, Aww. Katie. Yeah, hi. And Liv. Hi. Hello. Are we lonely because we're last of the centaurs? Yes, you guys are, nobody knew this, but you guys are centaurs. <laughs> the only two in the world. Okay. You're sad about it. I'm sad, but not because I'm <laughs> one of the only two. <laughs> Just because. Because <laughs> you're a centaur. <laughs> yes. Today we are talking about 617, Last of the Centaurs. Which IMDb says is named after Last of the Mohicans. Yes. Which wow. I did not put that together mm-hmm. while watching it. No, so. me neither. <laughs> Thanks, IMDb. Well, it's not quite no. because Last of the Mohicans is sadder because all the true Mohicans are destroyed. Right. And only an adopted Mohican is re- right. remaining. <laughs> yeah, cultural appropriation yes. survives. <laughs> Here, it's more, it, it seems that, you know, you have two male s- true centaurs, so theoretically they could continue making little centaurs. Yeah. If only we knew other? how that happened. <laughs> no, not with each other. With ladies. Oh, that's true. Because that's how centaurs are that's made. That's how centaurs are made. With human women. Human yeah. women. <laughs> And this episode, well, we'll get to it, but it seemed to imply that if you're a boy, you're a centaur, but if you're a girl, you're like a human girl? I I mean, I don't know if it implied that, but it's literally the only thing we've ever seen in terms of centaur genealogy. Oh, God. This is, yeah. But Zena was like, it's a boy. It's a centaur. It's a centaur. Yeah. So I I thought it was like, maybe she was like, well, the mom is human. So there's like a 50 50 chance. Yeah, it could have been maybe a but human. But I feel like any of this works. There's like no lady centaurs. This shouldn't work. Yeah, so in mythology, the, the there centaur are. gene is like on Only the, X, yes, the X chromosome. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that weird? No, wait, the Y? I don't know genetics. <laughs> we <laughs> need one. Dr. Alexis Los Alamos back to, <laughs> to tell us. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're going to be talking a lot about centaurs in this episode. Hooray! Yay! (laughs) (laughs) Written by Joel Metzger and directed by Garth Maxwell. So, Joel Metzger has been writing a lot of the episodes of the season. Great. He started with uh, Haunting of Amphipolis and kind of saved that script. He had some good ideas Mm -hmm. that they incorporated, mostly Mm -hmm. about Cyrene. Yeah, that's good. So I do approve of him for just, like, bringing in more (laughs) Cyrene. Cyrene. (laughs) She is a centaur in this episode. (laughs) Spoilers. But I feel like we've been kind of down on Joel. He hasn't necessarily written our favorite episodes. Yeah, he has not. Prior to this. Do we like him here? I I like this episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's good. Yeah. Yeah. I actually liked it more than I remembered. Yeah, same. Correct, same. I think we all had that experience. Yeah. Could it be because we have a much greater appreciation for Barias? I mean, that helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> once you become like a big appreciator of Barias, yeah, yeah, you'll love uh, any old Barias <laughs> material. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to be good, but it is. I think this actually like surprised me by how like juicy it was right. as a drama yeah i agree it's sort of like the opposite experience of what i had with you are there which like i remember really liking the first time mm. like was really yeah, really yeah. into was surprised by it and then when i rewatched it i was like eh you know yeah. it's not that funny after all yeah. and then the first time we watched this one mm-hmm. last of the centaurs i remember being kind of let down like yeah. i felt like oh a Barias episode, this should be like serious business, and it's not quite. And I was like frustrated with it. And I don't know, whatever it was that was frustrating me about it wasn't really paying me this time. I just really remembered that there were two episodes back to back that destroyed both the Amazons and the centaurs. And one you loved, and one you sort of didn't care yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Well, I never care about centaurs. <laughs> so it's not like they're going to make me. <laughs> but they did. But they did. Yay! And and But it just, it is very devastating. And, and I always appreciated that inclusion of the two kind of early Xena staples, centaurs and Amazons. Who, of course, both were introduced in the same episode, Hooves and, yeah. Hooves and Harlots. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> and, and as we mentioned in our podcast on Helicon, at one point, Helicon and Last of the Centaurs were going to be a single episode. Oh. Which is 
really hard to wrap your head yeah. around that's very how difficult. that would have worked. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would have been one battle that would have actually wiped out them both. But it's interesting is that they both have such uh, similar premises of like a scorned son getting revenge on yeah. this race really hating it <laughs> you can see you can see yeah. how it would have worked and right. gabrielle's attitude which of course we're gonna get oh, into gosh. really soon on this one you see how okay. that is sort of like an offshoot of mm. what was going on with her character in helicon it right. made more sense in helicon than it really makes sense here like this mm. episode is not really focused on what's going no. on with gabrielle at all yeah yeah but uh, i think because you've gone through that journey with her in helicon you kind of get it here you can kind of extend some of that characterization into this episode to help like inform it sure. a little this bit. This was straight up <laughs> she's not, not really in it. She's not. This is she's not a Gabs really episode. Not in so it. like it's like I don't oh, whatever you know. I'm not like even focusing on her ridiculous, <laughs> hilarious lines. She has <laughs> some, oh, but but it is interesting that I sort of wished Bellerophon was as fleshed out as Belloc. Wow, they even have like the same yeah. name almost. Yeah. So, because this, you know, this guy comes with baggage. Yeah. Personal baggage. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful personal baggage. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And oh, so much facial hair that <laughs> they put on Martone this week. <laughs> All sorts of kinds. Yeah, all the basically yeah. all the kinds you got to wear. All right, let's let's get into this. Uh, I really love this opening shot because it's like, oh, we have a close up of some horse hooves. Like, oh, is it Argo too? Like, what's going on? Nope, it's a centaur. It's a centaur. Get Surprise. ready. Mm-hmm. Pull back. Some nice wide shots. Yep, yep, yep. Just trot, trot trotting along. Doop, doop. We got some centaurs trotting along. Do they look any better than they used to? I guess. I guess. Yeah. I mean, certainly, before, you know, like since Her- Hercules Her- days. And, yeah, yeah. Oh gosh. And yeah, absolutely. Um, but we have our introduction to Xenon, not a baby anymore. A hot young man. Yeah, uh, I love I, I love him. Uh, he's very sweet. <laughs> he is very sweet. He has like male effiny hair. He has legit effiny hair. I love that that was the one thing where they were like, we need him to resemble effiny. Yeah, Please he would totally have hair. those curls. And he has the same like basket weave detail on his costume that she does. His- so that's genetic too. <laughs> His hat, though, is literally made out of Hercules' pants. Oh. <laughs> it is definitely too familiar. <laughs> so he, he has some centaur friends. He does. Uh, one of them is played by that actor. Yes, our fave. <laughs> our fave our actor. Our fave centaur. Who, yeah. He played Derek, I think is the Who's character's Derek? name, <laughs> on, on Hercules. Like <laughs> who had the plot of yeah. Xenon? Who, who, who sort but of the like woman a, was original fucked a lady centaur. Yes. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, the history of yes. these people with centaurs fucking ladies. <laughs> oh no. He, he, yeah. His previous appearance on Xena was as Dust. What is it? <laughs> Dustin as Hoofmanus. Yeah. The thespian uh, centaur. Not o- still not over it. <laughs> he's awesome because he comes back. They're like, you want to be centaur again? And he's like, yeah. Yeah, this dude's just like, Sign me he up. has centaur face. They bring him back <laughs> it's to play perfect, a centaur. Yeah. And then in this case, immediately kill him. Yeah, this was so sad. I was really bummed out because uh, his buddies, Xenon's buddies, they both kind of die for him mm-hmm. because these like red goons come out like soldiers of some sort. Yeah. And they're very much targeting Xenon. And mm-hmm. we're like, why? That's crazy. He's the hottest. I know. Well, Gotta yes. go after yeah. him. Sure is. Sorry, Dustin is who that is. So yeah, these boys uh, who were with him got either arrowed or speared, and it was really sad. And Xenon himself gets arrowed in the arm. But he oh, manages to run away. Sexy arm wounds. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I thought that Xenon looked like Billy Magnuson. Okay, you have to explain who that is. Billy Magnuson is an actor. Katie just saw him in Aladdin. He is in Aladdin, playing the Prince of Scandon, <laughs> doing an accent. Very funny. He's I a, thought. <laughs> an attractive comedic actor, uh-huh. and I was yeah. kind of expecting Zena to be funny. Well, <laughs> well, well, we don't know him from. 
I knew him from The Leftovers. Yeah, he's in one he episode a, of that. In one of the But he's in like best. so many other things. He's just like a guy you'd have to look up and you'd be like, oh yeah, I've seen him in that he's thing. He's in Maniac. He's in Kimmy Schmidt. It's funny we're talking about him because he didn't actually play <laughs> No, he, he did not. He looks a lot like The him. guy who played Zenon, who I thought that actor was really, really good here. Like the last time we saw so many close-ups of a random male crying, it was Virgil. <laughs> so this so is better for you than the, Virgil. I was like, whoa, they were like, really into this guy enough to give him all these close-ups of crying. I know, and like, he was kind of doing the, so you know, good. the ugly cry. He which, was really good. Like, that takes but, guts yeah. to go there. But he's like not an actor. He only did like two things, and the last thing was like a voice and scare him or something. Good for him. <laughs> Leave sure. it all behind. I'm sure he found something better. <laughs> so after all these uh, poor centaurs are killed here, uh, we cut to a marketplace, and immediately it's hilarious. Because it's Gabs, and she's feeling very, very good about shopping. Yeah, she's really feeling herself, I feel like, in this market. We haven't seen this side of her in a while. Yeah. I mean, opening line, clothes. Clothes. Yes. (laughs) Perfection, I would say. (laughs) I mean, she starts off very in character. Yeah, I actually (laughs) thought her delivery of the line, clothes, yes, was a little sarcastic, because we all know Gabs doesn't wear clothes. (laughs) Gabs wears what Gabs wears, and that's it. That's true, but you know they have she, to buy like disguises. Yeah, That's they do. True. She loves Maybe. shopping. And she does love wearing disguises. Yeah. In fact, her stupid little hat that she wears for yeah. a minute here reminded me of her stupid little hat from. Yeah. God oh my you know. gosh! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where I she love was her like, it's little me, little Gabrielle. <laughs> 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 yeah, this one was not as cute though, and this was a horrific outfit she chose. Oh yeah, well Zena knows it right away. <laughs> Zena's like, You'll, you're never gonna you're buy never that. Gonna buy <laughs> But she's not buying, she's shopping. There's a difference. Okay. It's different. I like her little mushroom hat. (laughs) Very dumb. (laughs) So when she's in the quote-unquote fitting room. Yeah, it's like legit. (laughs) She's gone into the fitting room. Yeah. And then. And then suddenly. Her mirror starts speaking to her. Yeah. Can you imagine you're in like the fitting room, like Uniqlo, (laughs) trying on (laughs) some new pants. Right. Like dead Amazon friend. Yep. 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 Telling you you're as beautiful as ever, which is, (laughs) I guess, considerate. But also. more beautiful. Very creepy. But yeah. Yeah, Yeah, F. And he goes, get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Ebony, she's back. I love, she looks wonderful. She looks great. Her hair yeah, looks Her hair fabulous. is perfect. It's like the best Ebony hair yeah, she like ever. Good. It's amazing. She hasn't been on the show in three years, actually. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's, yeah. it's like no time has passed at all. <laughs> I was very amused by the fact that, like, okay, Zuna, like, sidles into the dressing room. And, like, here's yeah. Gabs talking about Ephany. And immediately has that line that the character in the horror movie always has, where she's like, Ephany, she's been dead for years. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. Like, no well, shit. in case Dang. your first ev- ever episode of Xena is Last of the Centaurs, <laughs> That's you're a just great tuning choice. in. You're going to get a lot of exposition yeah. this week. It's some Hello, helpful. Ephany is back yeah. in her role of exposition queen. It's true. Yes. She's always... Always been good at it. <laughs> Always. <laughs> well, only Gabs can see her, mm-hmm. and that is because they're bonded through the rights of cast. Some bullshit thing like that. That is some bullshit. <laughs> that is dumb. Yeah. Is the right of cast a piece of jewelry for one thing? <laughs> it's just whatever you want it to be. It's not even a thing. <laughs> you just no, tell someone. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of that thing we started playing. We're like that game. Did you get that far? The Remember Zena that game? Zena, like that series game? And it was like an app and only that one lady who's like your character could see Xena. Oh, yeah. But Gabs can't. Like and that. Gabs in the corner going like, what? What's happening? What are you talking uh, about? Can you Same. explain what this game is so people can go it's find like it? It's called Series the Game. And series the Game. Mm. And it's an app. It's an yeah. app on the, I, in, all in, in, Phones, I, iPhone, it? iPhone, iPhone, uh, Android phone, phone. Okay, look it up. Series the game. I don't you know. Can hang it's out with Zena. Too for strain. You can buy Gabs a drink. We did. We bought her a drink. We should. Didn't like, you literally pay actual I money? I paid money. <laughs> she was so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I gotta give this girl some alcohol. This is a rich vein, and the developers of Series should know about it. If you make Gabs <laughs> sad enough, we will pay whatever you ask for in order to yeah. buy her. drink. Drinks, we will do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that reminded me of that. 
So Ephany tells Gabs that Xenon is in danger. And then Xena herself, now who believes that sure enough there is She Ephany comes Gabs, around real fast. Real fast. Yeah. Um, She's like, oh, yeah, Ephany can sense it because Xena all the time senses when Gabs is in danger. And I think when Solon is in danger. I feel like that's the subtext, actually, of this no, moment. It's Gabs. A different no, sort of subtext sure. than we're used to. Oh, my God. She, like, every episode knows when Gabs is in danger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's, that's, like, that's way true. more. That's true. It's more like you can tell, like, the people you love. Are, you know, I like know. It's, but also, like, also mom Solon, whatever, feelings. Whatever. Sure, sure, sure. So they're interrupted when this dude comes into the marketplace and he's all like, attention, Lord Balak has placed a bounty on the head of this centaur right. and then shows off this uh, wanted poster, let's just say. <laughs> yeah. This thing was something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but then Gabs is like, that's David. <laughs> and if you look at it, it looks like a four-year-old drew what, what he thinks is a centaur. <laughs> It looked like um <laughs> this one specifically. <laughs> it really did not look anything like him. It had a hilarious little sword. It looked like, like an um, angry face. Maybe. Yeah, it, <laughs> I'm evil. <laughs> it reminded me of Giles's paintings, like the little drawings he did in the episode of Hush. Oh yeah, on Buffy. <laughs> that <laughs> that's a nice yeah. callback. They were like little stick Love figures. <laughs> Yeah, so this has... There's also a yeah. Jewish star at right, the bottom it ends of with, it. That was a little weird. I was like, what are you trying to say, episode? Yeah. I mean, I, I can see what it's trying to say, but I'm not really sure it should be trying to say it. Mm. So, uh, coin? Well, I we'll think you're, you're being... Va- oh, you're you're putting a pin? Yeah. Via okay. a coin in jar. Okay. I'm merging our two well, favorite things. Well, I mean, things. it goes with, it goes with uh, Helicon, you know, like... Hitlerish guy who wants to destroy a race. Honestly, yeah, the only thing that wasn't in Helicon was like Holocaust imagery. So, so let's wait for let's, it to be a let's period. Let's do a little of that in, in centaurs, please. <laughs> so yeah, Jewish star on this yeah, Monte poster. Very, very odd. So I thought this was really funny. They just run off in search of Lord Balak to, you know, right. go give him a talking to. Mm-hmm. And I love that Ephany Ghost just like runs along. With <laughs> <That's so weird. laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna just put this down now. I love Danielle Cormack. She's yes. yeah. great. I love any excuse to have her back. But this was dumb. I don't think you she like should even ghost? be in that episode. Ghost lady. I feel like she's 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 silly in a way mm. that like actually the episode is not. So mm. it, it could have been like a different tone, I think, if they didn't have to include this aspect. I like certain parts of it, but I suppose like it is weird that she's just going around it's like just... only talking to Gabs and Yeah. Kind of always appearing and like disappearing, yeah, and through walls and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but certain stuff I I thought was very moving. Yeah, some some of it is very well acted, which is yeah. my only like caveat. Which mm-hmm. is like she's great, Renee is great in mm-hmm. these moments right. where she kind of like right is now hurt. actually, yeah, she got real emotion in the face. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm also gonna say that like. I know there were circumstances for this and this is what they had to do, but like, you know, we've had very silly Xena appearing in I soup know. and like various things. This is Wait, le- definitely less silly than soup. In yeah. The soup. Like all the times Xena has to appear as like a weird thing and because yeah. you can't be in the episode or something and it's like we've put up with that. And, and it's like, true. You know. Sometimes even in very serious episodes. We've yeah. Had to oh, put yeah. Up with that. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we put up with it here, and it is very Xena to have like one element that's sort of a little bit goofier than the rest. But yeah, I, I kind of would have preferred maybe a, 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 a darker, more, more serious approach. So they go to Belloc's house, and when we see Lord Belloc, he does this dramatic turnaround. We now know that that B stands for Barias. Oh! Son of. Son of. (laughs) It's just Martin. Yes. He's back. Martin Chokas is back. And a different wig. And different accent. (laughs) And a a tiny mustache. Okay, we got to talk about, well, we got to talk about all of it. (laughs) First things first, the mustache is bad. I almost prefer (laughs) what's going on with Barias, that little pointy thing, Uh, goatee thing Barias has. Oh, do you think the mustache is another clue to the Holocaust imagery? Oh, no. Can you put a coin in for Vera? 
I didn't even bring Losing it up. Losing listeners right at the end what? here. I, didn't I, bring th- it I up. thought that mustache was more like Mater D at a like <laughs> snobby French restaurant. I honestly didn't even mind the mustache. Well, the accent is so good. It's so. It good. reminds me of how much I sort of don't like his Hungarian <laughs> accent that he does for Mariah's. I mean, how I, dare you? Yeah, I love Vera's you. impression of it. I love it for its comedy potential. But that man's voice. Is like pure caramel. No, it isn't. It's that one so he's... good. <laughs> Not as this guy either. Oh, I, I mean, thought so. No, he had so many moments where he was like, "Oh, well, he, <laughs> he sounded well, insane." Yeah. Well, that's you trying crazy? to sound like Pariahs. Like that's his regular. Well, if you're gonna turn on like voice. Into the Badlands season one or something, maybe that's caramelly. Mm. Maybe in it's real a, life, it's a good boy. He's Not just his son so of good. Or Bariah. I just loved having him <laughs> as both. <laughs> And it's actually a really nuanced performance because they're similar. You know, they're not, it's not like he's doing like two vastly different performances. He's do, ba- Balak immediately reminds us of Barias, but the difference. I didn't see that at all. Oh, he's really? his own man. Okay. Oh, I, yeah. I like saw the similarities and well, the differences. Well, only in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Zena, you know, immediately... Her reaction's so good. ...is like, yeah, whoa about yes. this. And there's this, like, cue on the soundtrack that's just yeah. like... Wong. <laughs> is that her boner? <laughs> <Yep>. What? <laughs> that's Zena's boner! <laughs> well, the camera pushes in, because it's very, like, oh my gosh. And then right, Gabs is like, what's going on? And Ephany Ghost is like... She's staring into the past. See, oh, that's no. dumb. Oh, I didn't need it. This man is the spitting image of Marias. <laughs> he was Zena's lover. She knows this because she's dead and therefore all <laughs> she knowing. She knows all the dead faces. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're not, I, I was going to say, they, they're not even in the same like afterlife. No! <laughs> so, like, how would she know this? She just knows stuff. Maybe <laughs> she's just, like, a tremendous gossip and just, like, gets all the details in the afterlife. All the afterlives. I like that Gabs knows what Barias looks like to the T now. Yeah, that's nice. Yes. I, it kind of, like, broke my brain a little bit that she didn't already. Like, I kind of right, forgot forget, yeah. that mm-hmm. she Dead. doesn't, yes. never knew him. Yeah. Yeah. We've, she's just said through so many episodes <laughs> with flashbacks of him. Right. She's certainly heard about him. <laughs> <laughs> so Balak has this beef with Xenon because supposedly Xenon snatched Balak's daughter, Nika, and ran away with her. And that's so very much Baratheon, Robert Baratheon, that B now stands for. Oh my god, it's true. <laughs> and then you find out that like Nika's mom is named Leanna. Yeah, this is very and, confusing. And we had yeah. a good we laugh. talking about Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, good laugh Rhaegar Targaryen that. supposedly <laughs> stole Leanna Stark. R plus L equals J or whatever. It's over. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> um... <laughs> Balak is a huge racist. Oh, yeah. Huge. Like, I don't know if we've ever met a bigger one, a bigger centaur racist. Well, specifically on centaurs? Anti-centaur racism. Okay. Yeah. This is huge. Yeah. He, he calls him here a half-horse monstrosity. He's not wrong. <laughs> he is a half-horse. I mean, not... I mean, it's weird, okay? We definitely find it weird. <laughs> It's true. It's centaurs? Yeah, we they're weird. Centaurs they're very weird. weird. They but also hot. Weird. Yeah, that's why they make us I feel guess. weird. Oh, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> what did we say about them before? Well, we are forever concerned about how baby centaurs are mm-hmm. made, just, just in general. Yeah. I do worry. And I mean, concern. Yeah, it is just concern. <laughs> well, it's, it's like concerning. so much concern, <laughs> and especially at the end of this episode when that lady is having the centaur baby, yeah. and that's the second centaur, bro- two, yep. two human woman centaur bros. This show has made me. <laughs> that's one thing through. that we did not need is the like, another one. Another one. <laughs> Zero would be good. Zero. So he also uh, calls centaurs animals, and this really ticks Ephany off, of course, because yeah. Ephany fell in love with a centaur, right? Uh, she's like, you're the animal. <laughs> no, but nobody can hear her. But no one can hear her, except Gaz, who turns to her and goes, take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> and Balak hears her say that, and is like, how dare you tell me to yeah. take it easy with my racism? <laughs> so that's like a whole situation. Yeah, and Zena, meanwhile, is like, okay, whatever, I don't care about any of this. Now, let's just get to what's important here. Your dad was Barias, right? And Balak is like, that name is not to be spoken here. He said that he was a cruel-hearted man and a warlord. So immediately, I'm like, ooh, this is very interesting. So this is like 
opposite Bellerophon, who was like really worshiping his, you know, mom, Artemis. This is a guy oh. who like really hates his dad. Interesting yeah. parallel. It's yeah. also a little bit opposite Solon, you know, and his Barias worship. Oh, the great uh, Barias! The, the great Barias! <laughs> <laughs> But this is kind of bringing it around again to the great Barias. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, who would want? Stare at me. He's kind of becomes, seen as like, gotta show him. He's the great Barias. Right. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. What? I get it. I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> well, Zena's like, well, you should definitely, you know, use the name Barias around the centaurs because he was a hero to them. So it'll like... You know, help get his daughter back, but he, Smart but he advice. really fucking hates centaurs so, and, I mean, and Barai. So he like, hates both. he just can't handle this. So Xena, Gabs, and Ephany Ghost are walking uh, on Xenon's trail. This is my favorite. So there's also bounty hunters like after Xenon. So like yeah. they're ahead of them and Zenon. they're just walking. Zenon? Yeah, it's Xenon, Xenon, uh, whatever. That child's program. <laughs> what from a while ago? Xenon, you know, oh. she was like that girl and she wore like bright wow. colors in space. No. Come on. What? what? It is a gas, right? Xenon. Sure. On the periodic table. That is what. That's right. That is what, I, I'll tell you right now, is what Mulder and Scully's flashlights were made out of. And that's why they sh- were shining so bright like a diamond. Wow, that's a really elaborate fact, you know. Uh, in 19- Xenon, girl of hey. the 21st century. Oh, that's with a Z. Oh, Xenon Whatever. Z. <laughs> Look at those pink leggings. <laughs> Pronunciation-wise. Yeah, and in, in uh, the X-Files Expo 1998, I won uh, a trivia thing with, with that knowledge. What did you oh. win? I think a tape of the episodes that I already had. Wow. <laughs> Still good, though. Well yeah. done. So anyway, Xenon, Xenon, they're on his trail. And Gabs turns to Xenon and goes, well, if that's Bryce's son, then is he your son, Xenon? I mean, this is my favorite thing ever. That's a reasonable question to ask. <laughs> Listen, I think this is important. Listen, Gabs, thinks that it's perfectly reasonable for Xena to not have told her if she had had another child. That's very interesting. <laughs> and I think Let's unpack in keeping this. with their relationship it's true. that is I mean, filled yeah. with secrets, yeah. like big hair. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I thought it kind of implied, like, did you forget that you had another one? You had another one? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> I don't think she would think that they would for God. Like Solon had like a secret twin oh. or something. <laughs> Zena says that he was there before she came along. And also she owes him. She doesn't go into why right now. She just drops that and you're like, what? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so Gabs, meanwhile, is like, well, remember, we're here to help Xenon. So like, don't, you know, switch sides here. And this is a really good dilemma for Xena. It really is. Yeah, yeah this is so juicy. This is, I think, one of, one of the better moral dilemmas mm-hmm. we've had set yeah. up in a while. I like, I mean, this is like why I guess I want it to be a more serious episode because I like the pressure this is putting on Xena and Gabs. The idea that Gabs is like, A, you're kind of into this guy who like looks like your dead lover. Like right. there's like some jealousy, I feel mm. like, at the heart of this. But like the episode does not go there. No, but I think that it is really interesting because like I'm like, well, she has to help this guy, but she also needs to help this guy. So like what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. She has divided loyalties and, you know, there's a lot of good moral ambiguity then you know no one's exactly the bad guy so Ebony goes kind of uh floats ahead <laughs> and appears yeah. next to xenon who is kind of outside like a tree guarding it he can't hear her at first you think he senses she's there but yeah. then it just turns out he's i guess sensing well Zena Zena and gabs Gab. arrive yeah exactly so he draws the sword in them and he doesn't trust them Zena's like, well, we know you. You're named after me, Zena. Because <laughs> I delivered you at birth in yeah. a really gross way. Let me tell you all about it. <laughs> and the way that they get him to trust them is for Ephany to sing the special Amazon lullaby oh that supposedly everybody knows. Yeah, <laughs> That's Zena's like, like, everyone knows that this song. This is like a top 40 hit. <laughs> yeah, They're yeah. like, oh. But she had she special is. little lyrics. Just mm-hmm. for him. 
So she sings it, and then Gab sings it to him. These are two people who can't sing, but it's very sweet. I'm it's glad nice. finally we got to just hear Renee's singing voice. You know, yeah. the show's been hiding it from us <laughs> all these years with, like, actual people who can sing dubbing over her. But, like, I thought her performance of the song was really moving. You know? That's yeah. good, yeah. 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 Yeah, and the lyrics that she adds is just putting his name in it. Wow. Yeah, I know. No well, one you could don't actually know that because that you don't know what the real lyrics are. I think that they were mm. You don't know. Normal. You can't. Mm-mm. Yeah. That could have been anything. Yeah. Fine, whatever. Because <laughs> that would be silly if all she didn't put his name in. <laughs> she did, because then she switches it to <laughs> little baby Mariah's. <laughs> so this is like bringing us to a pretty emotional place. Uh, but then like it suddenly gets really funny again. When Effany Ghost tries to hug Xenon oh. and like falls through him. No. And remember, he's like oh, a no. big centaur body, yeah. so trying to hug this like big centaur body. I guess that's what makes it funny. Yeah, it's just real. It's it's goofy. I hate it when that happens. Uh oh. <laughs> Vera. <laughs> so Hands. <laughs> So Zenon uh, deems these people friends and calls out for Nika to come out. And she does. She, like, waddles out because she's super duper 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 pregnant. So it is very much like Leanna Stark here. And sure. like Effany and what? what's his face? Well, they didn't run off together. They That's just true. Like, became a couple. They just got couple. together yeah. and like went to yeah. Athens where they but were But it is like that. It is like that uh, episode in Hercules with our centaur right. friend. And, yeah. And, and, and Lucy. Zena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so the point is that like sometimes when centaurs run off with ladies, it's mutual. It's not always kidnapping them. Which they also do. That yeah, is but fact. have we never seen that? On, we have the show? It seems from to be that episode a, in, in Hercules with, oh, with his like with, buddy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. He's a bad centaur. But yeah, it's interesting that on Xena we've only ever seen. Yeah, the good. You all pr- promote centaur stuff. Not all centaurs, you know. <laughs> oh, oh god, <laughs> I'm throwing coins. With Vera. Vera's on a roll. roll. So Xena's like, okay, time for some. L- give you your like. <laughs> Um, ultrasound right here with my hands. <laughs> so yeah, that's where she's like, oh, it's a boy and a centaur. No. Oh, Why does boy. she know this? Because she can feel the little hoodies. So weird. Okay, whatever. Little horse legs in there moving sure, around. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So she's already been feeling some pains. Yeah. Because she's like, she's going to give birth yeah. soon. We know. The episode's warning us. Get ready. Get ready. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a with, happening. with another one oh, of these. Boy. And uh, she tells us that her dad, Balak, does not know she's pregnant because she's just been like hiding away from him and like and he, he never care. he never looks at her anyway because yeah. of how much she reminds him of her dead mom. Oh, that portrait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a it's do, yeah exactly. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's pretty intense. And he's always just sitting there staring at oh, it. Boy. Balak is a fun guy. So Zena's plan here is that like, oh man, you know what? We'll make peace here. This baby will make peace because it has. Barias' blood in him. The blood of Barias is in your son. <laughs> this is, I don't know. All these lines are The lines are, like, are hilarious. Maybe these are some Joel Metzger <laughs> problems. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to go find the rest of the centaurs. And Gab's asks Zena why she owes Balak. This prompts a flashback. <laughs> we see... Barayas! Oh, I love this beauty shot of him coming out of the yurt, just being like, hello, it's me! Yes. Sorry, the what? Yurt. <laughs> yeah. So he was a prominent warlord, and Zena was just like an ambitious little upstart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that line where she sort of says, and me, I was just ambitious. Yeah, and it this is amazing. So this puts, the country puts this like after... Uh, after Caesar. Yeah, so after the events of Destiny. Right. Yeah. So but before she, everything else. Before everything seen. else. So she has her little hat and she has her cane because her legs are effed right. up. And she drops that cane and yeah. is like, you know, musters up as much dignity as she can and like hobbles up to him. Cause she, she grab the yurt yeah. for a second. She has ideas here. Yeah. She wants him to take off with her and leave his uh, wife, or like his woman, I don't think they're married, uh, and child 
his son behind so that they can go pillage in the east. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but she's trying to convince him to steal all the money that he owes to his men. Right. Yeah. He's so, like, like fair. The whole army. Yeah. Yeah. He was going to, like, divide all their treasure that they, you know, grabbed up between everyone. He's, like, the best boss. But she's like, nah, let's take yeah. it all and let's, go east. Let's exploit your workers yeah. and go east. And he he's kind of intrigued, but he's like, well, I don't know if I can, like, go with you until I know if we can ride together. Oh, don't worry, Marias. You're going to be <laughs> riding together. <laughs> and we saw you on that oh, horse. Oh, yeah. And she says, giddy up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I liked it. Yeah. This scene was definitely written by someone who had just watched the episode where Xena and Marias have sex on a horse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> they go into the yurt and, uh, oh, no, as things are getting down and dirty there, mm-hmm. little Balak is like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on in here? Yeah. And he wanders in and catches them in the beginnings of the act i should say in what freud calls the primal scene <laughs> <laughs> so Zena comes out of the tent because she, she's like oh hold on a second <laughs> i got something to hear one second one second one second and she comes out of the tent grabs this like rug yeah. throws it over his Literally head just drapes him in this rug and throws him <laughs> she scoops him up yeah. and then throws him in some trash <laughs> I love how the little wooden sword is kind of yeah. sticking out of it still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And she's like, tip for your kid, never walk in on people fucking. That's not what she said. <laughs> <laughs> this is a family show. Right. Between Can two you people. Can that's what it was? Yeah. Well, that's like, what it is. I mean, that is no, what I it know. is. But it's like annoying. <laughs> when it's like between two people mm-hmm. and their passion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, and now we're back. And Zena is very shamed of past Zena's behavior. She was yeah. the other woman. Mm-hmm. She stole Balak's father and made a fool of his mother. Listen, Bryce <laughs> also made his own choices. Yeah, he did. Yes. I mean, he was a jerk face in that flashback. He really just was. Now. He really, really was. And I mean, then the next one, he's even worse. Yeah. And none of this took much convincing. No. So like, no. Zena blames herself because that's what Zena does. But I think we, as the audience, are kind of look at it being like, oh, the great Barias. Yeah. So great, everyone. Remember? Yeah. Complicated <laughs> well, remember, human Barias. But, but yeah, I mean, that's exactly <laughs> what he was. But like, remember we heard that term for him and then we met him. We were like, we're like really? Real- him? Wow. Yeah. This guy's the worst. Yep, a little yep. bit. He's very complicated. So they arrive at the centaur camp, and it's completely devastated. Yeah, it's just like burned out buildings. Yeah. Just, I mean, this is some, some Something imagery. Something happening. Yeah, some imagery. And even more so, we get to, I don't know, one of the most devastating things on this program, where I'm like, I can't believe they did this, because it's pretty hardcore it is horrifying and they you know it's not even just insinuated they have like these long long, long yeah uh it is a pit full of dead centaurs all the centaurs dead in a pit let me remind you Mm -hmm. pit full of dead horsemen yes some of them like had the top the human parts were ripped off like oh, that was, was pretty it was insane. Tense. Yeah. Like there was just all these various dead bodies. And like you said, yeah, there was a lot of close ups and lingering shots on them. We'll get even more later. Well, Xena has a classic line here. <sighs> uh, you don't like it? <laughs> well, do you want to do I it? I like it slash love it. I mean, I don't like it slash love it. Does that uh, make sense? I don't even, I don't think Lucy saved this line. No, there's no saving, there's no this, saving line. this I is... don't think even like, I don't know who's the greatest actor ever in the world. Meryl Streep? <laughs> I don't know. Meryl Streep couldn't save this. <laughs> she goes... Son of Barias, what have you done? <laughs> Son of Barias. Wow. wow. Well, wow. what has he done? Yeesh. Yeah, I mean, he killed all of these dudes except for Xenon. And, like, there were not that many left. There would seem to be way less centaurs one, than one Amazons. Worth, yeah. yeah. Yeah, these guys were what really running low. What already happened? 
I don't know. Maybe they found it really difficult to fucking procreate. Mm. Maybe they had a lot of girl births. I mean, they've been encountering prejudice over right. this whole time. They've yeah. been on the run in the same way yes. that the Amazons right. have. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, they didn't have that whole great centaur nation no. coming together yeah. kind of thing. So I think with the death of Boreas, that seems to have really mm. been the end of their chances. At, yeah. Hmm. And they're like former nice man leader guy. Oh, right. I forget his name. I forget his name. <laughs> but he was a good leader for them. Yeah. yeah. Well, Xenon really does not take this well. And he cries a lot. And this is, yeah, this, this is, is some ugly good, cry. Yeah, good acting here by this dude. And he vows vengeance. But Nika begs him to think of her and her, their baby. Right, he so, he can't take on this like vengeance quest. Cause, no, because he's definitely gonna be killed. Number one, yeah. and uh, he says, "Then who will seek justice?" And Zena says, "I will," which is really good. Yeah, that was a great moment. I agree. So she goes to yell at Balak, <laughs> and she says that his daughter married Zenon and that they're having a baby. How could the son of Barais do this? <laughs> Barais <laughs> defended the centaurs. <laughs> And then he says, yes, from that faithless bitch. Ooh, oh, yeah. Her face, her Ooh, face That here. was incredible. Oof. Her face here. So good. Yes. I also really love the term, like, faithless. Yes. Like, yeah. little baby Balak picked up on the fact, well, that she would come between, like, I guess they were married. A married couple. Or, like, he saw that she never believed in any kind of, like, gods or anything. I don't know. It was just like an interesting thing because like, yeah, Xena really is faithless. Yeah. So. Faithless in every sense. Yeah. yeah. This is also when we get into some of the kind of backstory of Balak and we realize, yeah. uh, you know, it hasn't quite been said, but we see he lives in this like really fancy looking fortress mm-hmm. and has like great clothes. He's Lord Balak. He's yeah. Lord Balak. So he has, he's sort of very upwardly mobile. He has made something of himself, mm-hmm. this man, and he's very proud of it. He's yeah. proud of how different he is from Barias. Yeah. Who also was sort of a powerful person, but in a very different way. This guy's sort of, you know, bougie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And he calls it Barias an ignorant savage, yeah. which also, again, like really strong, but very accurate words. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> But it's interesting that, you know, yeah, I mean, he he earlier called him cruel hearted and a warlord, yeah. but I feel like he never quite cycles back to like, you know, saying that the problem with Barias is that he was like super violent. Because clearly that's something that Balak does too. He just goes around yeah. with his mm-hmm. goons right. killing people who yeah. stand in his way. But he seems like, well, well, we don't really know his business practices, you know, outside of yeah. this, but he seems very kind of only his mind is on this one thing specifically because the centaur took his daughter maybe yeah or like do do for sure do we think that he had problems with centaurs before i mean there's a reason nika never told him that she was sleeping with a centaur so (sighs) well it's a difficult subject to broach because the first (laughs) question is well how are you fucking guys like what (laughs) are the positions because it's still a question it's always a question (laughs) stop it (laughs) oh i just what if no judgment but so much. So much, so much I'm judgment. I'm so sorry. Put in a coin for me. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I do love also that this scene is, you know, doing a lot of good work with the sort of ambiguity of Barias's character. Because mm-hmm. here, yeah, yeah, Zena is defending him. Yeah. And Balak is saying, no, he's the worst. And they're both sort of right. Yeah, exactly. Like right. They both make good points. Yeah. Like, this man, you know, is, is neither the saint that Zena sometimes right. depicts him as, uh-huh. or... Like this, like horrible, awful man that right. Balak seems to think he was. Mm-hmm. So Balak is like not hearing anything she's saying, and he wants the land swept and to find Xenon because he like needs him killed. He doesn't want like a bastard centaur heir, you know, for his empire that he's built. He needs like a nice human heir. Uh, so Xena draws her sword and says, "Tip for you, kid. <laughs> Never walk in on two people fucking." <laughs> Does she say it in the hope that he will remember her saying it? Do you think she does this deliberately yeah. to keep Oh, yeah. Okay. And, he, and he does. He is a shooketh. He's yeah. like, what? 
Yeah, the second person's up to be like, what? You're not old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he goes into that flashback again. I know, we said the whole thing over. Even I was like, oh, there's going to be new like, info, but like, act. no, it was the same. It's like, was this episode a little short? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 20, 30 seconds? Zena wants him to come with her, but he calls the guards. I love that like, he pulls his sword on her, and then she just like immediately knocks it out of his mm-hmm. hand. Yeah. Like, oh, he's this a guy flop. Is, he's a flop. Yeah, he is not a swordsman. He did not yeah. inherit that from no, Marias. he's a businessman. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a, a fight with the guards here. There's, I thought this was surprisingly cool. Yeah, and really cool music, cool music, too. Like, Chanting really, really stuff. cool music. A lot of it is the music. Yeah. This is new music. Mm-hmm. It's like like a choral yeah. element. Yeah. Like, yeah, cool fight song. We get these, like, really nice close-ups, like, of Xena sheathing her sword mm-hmm. on her back. I thought that was really cool. And then there's, like, an overhead shot when, like, she's surrounded by all the goons. Mm-hmm. And they're pointing their spears at her. And I was just like, it's yeah. pretty. And in the midst of this, she managed to tie Balak's hands and oh, then yeah. shove him out the window. <laughs> More wi- people going out the window. Another connection yeah. to Helicon. <laughs> yeah, so this he lands on a horse. Uh, and I, I felt very upset for his junk. <laughs> because it's like from the like two story window. <laughs> I mean, and then she goes down and like lands on another horse. She wraps her whip around Balak's horse's uh, reins or whatever and, and pulls it along behind her. Which is confusing because then later she's like, keep up. And it's like, know, you're make, pulling him yeah, along. Yeah, exactly. So there's like a, now a big horse chase. Um, the guards are following them. There's some wines. Oh, no. Nice day for it. <laughs> Why is this happening? <laughs> nice day for Nice it. day for what? <laughs> yes. Zena. Lines. <laughs> oh. So eventually they get rid of all the guards via various, like, tree traps. So, and, so oh, much. Yeah, oh. like, you know... Pulling back the branch and hitting yeah. him in the face with it. Yeah. I love the stuff when she's actually swinging on the vine. Again, like um, Garth Maxwell gets some really cool shots mm-hmm. out of it. Like yeah. the stunt work is neat. Mm-hmm. Right. Like you really feel like, whoa, it's not just swinging on a vine. It's like yeah. all this like flippy, flippy do stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some good Zoe stuff. So they finally arrive where they're going and. Oh, I should note that by the end of it, she and Balak are sharing one horse. Oh, yeah. That was very... And she, very... like, grabs him around the face, sort of, to, mm-hmm. like, I don't know why, actually. And I was just, like... <laughs> chipping it. I was started chipping it. I was, like... Yeah. Well, you can't have sexy. those two on a horse without yeah. thinking about <laughs> no, the horse yeah. sex. Lucy and Martin, man. <laughs> they are magic together. So, yeah, I was immediately, like, is it weird that I'm shipping Xena and... Son of Pariah. <laughs> I mean, this isn't her son, but at the same time, clearly she has her wires still a, be, a little be, crossed and sort of thinks he is her whatever, son. Whatever, I'd be bit. shipping that. For- <laughs> like, that great. So they yell at each other about Pariah some more, and this prompts another flashback to the day where Pariah left. We get to meet Natasha. Right. I do love her outfit, and I do love how very kind of, you know, Eastern European. They Absolutely. Are. Like that was And I like You couldn't it, tell from him really, I feel like, but you can tell from her. You can definitely tell yeah. from her. And I like that her outfit, the colors and the fabrics and stuff, like mimics kind of what Balak is wearing, mm. you know, as an adult. Oh, cool. oh so he's yeah. like doing the thing like a, a Bellerophon, like worshiping. Yeah, his I think mom I think probably more. he's he's a mama's yeah, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh she finds ba- little Balak under the rug in in the trash and she goes and uh also enters the tent and oh my god, scandalous. She catches her man with another woman, this harlot. And I love that Barias' reaction to this, and I can't do a Barias voice the <laughs> way you can, Vera, but he's just like, hey. <laughs> 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 And Zena, you know, he goes after her, but then Zena is like looking super pleased with herself. Oh, she, She's like, oh, yeah, I did the, it. The cat who had sex yeah. with the canary. <laughs> and drank the milk. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> or the cream or whatever. <laughs> Help. <laughs> so Natasha tells Rice to choose between his family and his whore. By the way, this lady looked like Roma Downey, I thought. <laughs> Who has been in the Hercules. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> and he's like, if you were 
more of a woman I wouldn't have to choose. Hey, remember Bryce is also the worst? Yeah. Here's more evidence. She spits at him. And then he takes off with Xena. <gasps> yeah, I love this shot where he's pulled up onto the horse with Xena. I feel like this was very much like from Balak's perspective because yeah. it's like a really like low angle mm-hmm. and it's almost like they just like disappear into the sun. Yeah. yeah and and Xena coming on the horse like after that like made her look so powerful when like we should remember that, you know, she looks so meek hobbling around with her broken legs. Yeah. So she really was like, yeah, I'm the bitch here. Yeah. She managed to to win even despite her vulnerability. Yeah. yeah. This yeah, is a yeah. great little bit of of Warlord Xena. Mm-hmm. Like I, yeah. I like this glimpse. This is I think a very effective use of the flashbacks. Yeah. There, there aren't that many of them, which I think helps. Like you just get this this nice little like tableau and right. you're like, "Oh, it says so much." I really whoever figured out the detail that she like throws away her crutch before yeah. meeting with Barias, I just it's such a it's great perfect. character yeah. detail. Yeah. I feel like uh oh, it elevates the whole episode, honestly. Yeah. Uh, he is on the horse with Xena and they're about to take off when little Balok is like, Papa! And he turns back and is like, has a feel and gives him his necklace. So that's like the one thing he has. Mm-hmm. From his father. From his father. The great Barias. Mm-hmm. Remember, Solon also only had one thing from mm-hmm. his father, the great Barias, his sword. Oh, yeah. Interesting. So yeah, we have this dramatic dissolve from young Balak into older Balak. And then oh, he, yeah. Yeah, and he tells Xena that when Barais' army broke up, they all fell into servitude. Oops. Yep. Yikes. And he would hear stories of Barais' exploits in As the East. As he was being starved and beaten. Yeah. Yikes. With Xena. Oh, so he might not like Xena very much. He does not. And he shows her the necklace. <laughs> <laughs> he says he didn't keep it for sentimental reasons, though. He kept it. Only to remind me of what scum he was and how far I've come. I love that you're do- you're sort of doing the Barias voice. But then again, I feel like yeah. Martin here is actually kind of doing Barias. When he gets angry, he, oh he sounds God. a little more Hungarian. Oh, uh, it's so great when he gets Just angry. When he starts screaming, yeah. scum! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I, I think this is part of the performance that he's like, you know, this refined... Like rich man, yeah. But get him upset, and right. he suddenly just starts screaming. Yeah, he really cannot like control his just pure variousness, <laughs> like this rage that's yeah. like in in his blood. Yeah. So Zena's response to this is to angrily shove him to the centaur pit, and she shows him how far he's gone. Right. He's so gone. fine, so cultured. Yeah. Look how far you've come. He wiped out an entire race. She like ru- literally rubs his face. Yeah. In, in the pit of bodies. Mm-hmm. This was a thing that happened on Zeta. This yeah. is so dark. Is it too yeah. much? I love it. I mean, it's powerful. I mean, there's a part of me that goes, uh, you know, the fact like it, it, it's a little bit of like, oh, like, I don't know how to feel about this because like I have a lot of affection for Balak, but he did this. Like mm-hmm. this is yeah. like Holocaust imagery. That's yeah. what I was saying. Oh, I'm I actually, don't know that's what I'm, I mean. Yeah. Not like Xena's actions, but like the it, imagery. Yeah, like it's it's hard to uh, like I'm not sure if this yeah. was like responsible at an episode where actually the guy responsible for doing the thing kind of gets off the hook at the end. You know, true. I don't know. It's like, oh, he's just a nice guy. His dad left him as a child. <laughs> 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 I mean, like, he wiped out a race. Yeah, he did. Whoops. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw a coin in. <laughs> He's but yeah, like, I mean, it says a lot about this actor that yeah. like he's he's just so likable that you yeah. don't you give him a pass a little yeah. bit. So you know what's this show? <laughs> what well, is what is this show? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> he says that he did what he had to do and he asked why she brought him here and not just kill him. And then he's like, "Could it be that I look too much like?" Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but also this part's amazing. Yeah. I love the drama of this, that he just calls her bluff, and he goes on and on, yes. and it gets worse and worse. Oh, yeah, it does. He says, you had a son with Mariah's, didn't you, Zena? 
Wouldn't it be too much like slitting his throat? Whoa, that's very good. I wrote in parentheses, sexy hissing and a lot of panting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember if that's about Zena or, or Well, Zena whispers no. Yeah. That's what I got. Yeah. She says no. She just wanted to show him. or She just wanted him to know about Barias. And she does this really super dark thing and throws him into the pit of bodies mm-hmm. and says, tell them how far you've come. What a fine lord you are. Yeah. That's mm. hardcore. But it's also, I guess, tough love. She's right. hoping yeah. it, it will have an effect on him. But yeah. again, I mean, you're right. If anyone would look at like a genocide and be like, how can I make this man feel sorry for his genocide? I mean, yeah. that would be that would be Vizita. Yeah, like, she for sure. Would, she would mm-hmm. attempt it. I mean, she's done it, sort of. Yeah, she has. Herself. I mean, may- maybe not quite so rigorously, but yeah. So meanwhile, Nika is going to labor. They they find this like abandoned house or whatever, and like put her in there. Uh, Zena goes to uh, on the lookout, uh, and he spots Balak's men. He decides to lead them away. So they run after him, and then also some bounty hunters are there, and they're like, "Oh, you know what? Let them have him." Balak is going to pay w- much more for his daughter mm-hmm. as a ransom. So they, you know, these two guys are going into the house this with the women. This reminded me of a little bit of One Against an Army, the mm-hmm. sort of like last That's stand a, in the yeah. farmhouse imagery. Oh, yeah. Ephany Ghost is coaching Gabs how to deliver this oh. centaur baby. I oh, hate God. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Gabs this. who was going to get to deliver the baby. Like, one for you, one for oh, me gosh. kind of a thing. She's like, do not push. Whatever you do, don't do it. You will probably die. Yeah, you I will explode think. from horse. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so the bounty hunter can show up, but before, you know, Gabs has to do anything, Xena takes care of them. And then she jumps into, you know, medicine woman mode. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> She's like, Gabs, here, take my shotgun, go clean it. And you're like, oh, no. Yeah, it's she, happening. It's do, happening. Do we even she, like, wipes it? it with a rag. Does she uh, really? Oh, God. I mean, it's like... Nika Kate, dies tomorrow of <laughs> infection. Katie's like, was that even clean? <laughs> this is actually when I began to feel a sense of dread. Like, even on the rewatch, I kind of didn't remember what happened to Nika in the episode. But oh. I... I somehow assumed she was going to die. Oh, interesting. I, I was really convinced, you know, in part because they've set up, like, yeah. that her mom died in childbirth. Right. Oh, so I was like, true. well, I mean, her mom was just giving birth to a human Regular baby. Yeah. <laughs> so. did happen, yes, of course. So, so I felt this real sense of doom. I was ready for, for Nika to die. I think that's part of what improved the episode for me on the rewatch is that I was so nervous. Mm. Oh, my goodness. That's well, a, yeah. I mean, she I mean, has Xena here. Xena's delivered to our babies Yeah, you're before. like, this is fine. But she's also killed a lot of people. She's, she has. True. <laughs> she gets, she takes away Nika's pain with the pinch. That's nice. And then I she, think that's from uh, is there a doctor? That's oh the last yeah, time okay. We saw her yeah. Do that. And then she cuts her open with the chakram. All you need is thirty seconds to get that baby. Well, out. it was like a pain pinch, oh, not pain like pinch. the. Death oh, you said pinch. the pinch. Well, a pinch. I was like, what? Oh gosh. Okay, Sorry, just making guys. sure. Didn't mean sure. to imply that nice that one that's just her. like uh, an aesthetic. Yeah. Exactly. What is it? What is it called? The thing that you give yeah. ladies in yeah, la- yeah. labor? Yeah. Oh, bad science. Epidural. Hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little baby horse man. Here he is. <laughs> and he's clearly a little human baby wrapped in sort of a white fuzzy thingy. thingy and he has little hoobies. With some little hoobies sewn onto it. <laughs> Very cute. Uh, is, this baby cute. is wicked cute. Yeah, I have to say, the, baby's the baby cute. that they cast here is adorable. So from outside, you hear Bela calling Zina. Also, Gabs is like, "I'm gonna give her stitches now." <laughs> what? She yep, said that? yep, yep. She, she volunteers Whoa, to do that. That okay. is a, a skill Gabs has. All right. Apparently. Where, where do they have? Probably in their bag. Yeah, some yeah, bread. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What am I seems, even saying? Of course like they carry. They what am I even talking about? <laughs> sure, of course, of course. So Zena runs outside and she sees that Balak and his men are there and they have Zena and he, and he has like uh, ropes around his neck. And that's pretty bad. Oh, yeah. Bad situation. Balak wants an even trade for his daughter. No deal. 
This is a really cool shot I thought of Zena. She's just sort of standing there, like outside the farmhouse, like looking super tall, like 10 feet tall. Mm -hmm. And she's holding the chakram in her hand. And I guess it's still covered in like maternity blood. Ew. And <laughs> goop. I mean, it, I mean, it probably wasn't, but in my mind, it should be. That's what she was just using it for. Yeah. And I love that she can turn around, you know, after doing surgery, delivering a child into the world, mm -hmm. takes that same thing and turns it into a weapon and nice. is going to use it to kill these dudes. Well, she I mean, she really, what she does is cuts the ropes that are That's true. She sets Zena free so yeah. that he can help with in this fight scene since exactly. Gabs is busy. She's busy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they fight the, the men. And then Balak and Zenon start fighting. Right. Yes, exactly. And I like this because, you know, Zenon is sort of also like a surrogate child for Zena. I mean, you know, she mm -hmm. was there at his birth. He's a part of the goings on in maternal instincts. You know, you yeah. have all these different mothers and children. Kind of the only one that doesn't get name checked in this episode <laughs> is Hope. Hope. <laughs> um, oh, well. But but I thought the idea of, yeah, of having Zenon... Well, Sorry, I was oh, going to yeah. say that it, uh, Gab's delivering her in in the sort of house like that m reminded me of Hope. Right, so. yeah, of Hope's delivery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's how she's name checked. Okay, in my well, opinion. we'll keep it. <laughs> Someone could have been like, this, you know, <laughs> this I, just have, like I still have hope. You know, oh, one of those, yeah. at least. Uh, but anyway, uh, I thought it was cool to have, yeah, these two different kind of sort of children of Xena, Balak mm -hmm. and Xena, and fight each other. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're going at it, but Xena yells for Xena to get Nika and the baby. So that really kind of, she was like, I don't want any bloodshed between these two. Let's and, get him out of here. And we see what a good person Xena is because he just immediately is like, okay, no more circle of violence and vengeance. I'm out. Gonna, yeah. go, gonna go see my son. Yeah, and he's really cute when he sees him. He's sweet. I, I don't know. I really mm -hmm. was endeared to this. Yeah, this sure. Drum, he is sweet. That's, that's part of why I feel like I didn't actually need actual Ephany around because I feel like this dude is, is sweet on his own. He makes you care about him. You don't need his mom to be like, remember me? I was a cool character. <laughs> Care about my son. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. But yeah, but I like seeing her. She's, so, yeah. she's very pretty. Because you have to, like, we're in the last stretch, so it's like, kind of like the parade of old faves. Yeah. yeah. And she's yeah. definitely there as part yeah. of the parade, as, mm -hmm. as of course, <laughs> is Martin. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank exactly. you for yeah. that show. <clears throat> Ephany does her, you know, thing, a ghost thing of, like, popping in and out of the house and outside. <laughs> yeah, literally, like, <laughs> passing messages yeah, between yeah, yeah. the two groups. So she tells Gabs that Xena needs help because the soldiers got reinforced. Uh, they have her surrounded, you know, with her spears. Guess oh, what? No. Zena doesn't actually need help at all. She does not. <laughs> Anthony's she, wrong. She does a crazy, like, torpedo move into the sky. <laughs> Vera is rolling her eyes yeah, so big it is as like, she says this. not for me. <laughs> 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 she gets, I mean, she, you know, gets herself out of that situation, which is good. Which That's is cool. Good. Always yeah, cool to always see. Cool. And, and even though uh, Gabs didn't need to help, she still does. She's, yeah, you get a few could, yeah, shots exactly. of her working with her size. So she, they're fighting, and then Gabs is like, you know what you have to do, Zena? You have to oh kill him. my <laughs> God. Gabs suddenly starts in about the murder of Balak. Right? Yeah. And Zena's like, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is intense. This is an yeah. intense thing. She, like, she knows that Zena has these feelings. I mean, that's why she's pushing her. But she seems very, like, not sympathetic at all to them. She's just like, come on, Zena. Uh, like, go do this. So Balak has his men aim crossbows at Xena, and he is really losing it, man. He like his cool is like no more. This is some great acting here where Martone <laughs> screams, Fire! <laughs> it's oh my god. Maybe the most extra thing I've it ever is seen. So extra. Xena grabs a shield and like torpedoes herself at him, and like all the all the arrows go into the shield. But the physics of this oh are very God. confusing to me. So now she's right next to Balog, and he has a crossbow. So it's him versus Xena, and he's she's like ready to do it. Yeah, she's got the sword. Well, we don't. She's like, we'll see. I don't yeah. know what she's gonna do, but she's but in position. She's there. But before anything can happen, Nika comes out with the baby. And says, no, stop it. 
Like, she's so calm. <laughs> well, look, she just gave birth to a baby centaur, okay? She doesn't have any energy to be emotional. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah, you're right. So I thought Martone was so good here because he's, like, just such a rage monster. And his eye, like, he has tears in his eyes from, yeah. like, how much, like, he, I don't know, hates everything and, <laughs> and has, like, so much childhood trauma. Yep, yep. And uh, he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Gabs is literally like, you should kill him right now. Yeah, Gabs <laughs> is standing there being like, kill him, kill him, kill him. <laughs> yeah. In front of his daughter. Do yeah. it, do it. Do it now, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Nika is like, no, can't you see? I love him. And uh, Balak has this line where he's like, you don't know what love is. Mm. Which is such a great self-burn. Yeah. And Xena tells him that... Barias died protecting his son. Yeah. Your brother. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is the first, like, overt mention of Solon. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. No. Her, well, no, second, second, <laughs> second <laughs> overt. But, yeah, her, her actually, like, making this connection that they're, that yeah. they're brothers. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you have a flashback to Past Imperfect. Uh, including Satrina. Oh, I was so happy yeah. to see Satrina. She even gets alive. <laughs> this flashback. Yes. It's your son, Zena. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the best. Flashback. Yeah, one of the best uh, moments on the show. Wow. Yeah, uh, it's so good. Yeah. And I mean, it, it kind of, again, elevates the whole episode because yeah. you're like, oh shit, this is such amazing drama. The, uh, Past and Perfect, also directed by Garth Maxwell. Mm. So it feels honest that they're okay, using it good. here. Okay, good. Yeah. And she says that Baraz died trying to change what he'd become, which is very true, because he was a very terrible human. And then he was like, you know what? I'm going to help these centaurs. And that's how he became the great Baraz. The great Baraz. And we see that just, like, wonderful, like, actual death scene where he, you know, is, like, reaching so, for the yes. baby, even as he dies on the ground and he's all covered in mud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so dip. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Wow. So she's like, don't, you know, don't you want to change, Balak? Don't you want to be a better man? Well, this is, yeah, this, these are such important lines. She says, Barias died trying to change what he had become. That was the real story of your father. Mm -hmm. How will your story end? Balak? Yeah. I like that, this idea, you know, that they're writing their stories. Right. And she, she also says that you don't want your daughter to grow up hating you like how you hate Barias. The killing can end here. So this is very similar to what she says to Bellerophon in Helicon. Yeah. You know, she offers him out of the cycle mm -hmm. and he says no. Right. This guy says yes. This That's guy very nice. Says yes. Yeah. So he is like, okay, I'm cool with everything now. <laughs> 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 Hello, horse man grandchild. <laughs> I give you Barias's necklace. He says that uh, when her son is old enough to understand, tell him about me, I guess. Yeah. Like as if he won't be in his grandson's life. And yeah. Nika's like, no, hey, you know, stick around. Yeah. Do we, We're cool with you him, now, even though yourself. you killed my husband's entire family. Right. It's all good. Yeah. And, you know, this is where we get the little name for the baby. It's little baby Barias. Baby oh Barias, the He's centaur. Really cute. Really cute. <laughs> he was, like, drooling before. Yeah, he sure was. <laughs> this is such a nice uh, kind of resolution to Barias' character. Because, yeah, the centaurs brought out the best in him. Yeah. They're part of what made him into a better person. It's mm -hmm. nice that his descendant... Will be a centaur. Jeez <laughs> oh, Louise, yeah. You really didn't think that would happen. <laughs> so Balak accepts them and he shows them uh, like the peaceful land where they can live, which was a little out of the line because he was like, this is your mother's land. Kind of implying that she was rich or something and he married Oh, he well. just married money. That's how he got, got <laughs> yeah. to be such a fine lord. Okay, okay. But dude. he's like, it's peaceful here and you can all live very nicely and yeah in happily. safety and peace right. the implication seems to be that you know they won't have any like, he won't be people trying to, to kill centaurs there yeah. we'll see we'll see about that Ebony wants to appear to xenon and she could only do it by using Cam's body oh my gosh <laughs> A ghost. So, yeah, this is a ghost situation. So, yeah, we got a nice pottery scene here. <laughs> 
So she appears uh, in, in Gabs' body and she sings the little Amazon lullaby to baby Bryce. And she does the same thing of like switching the line to include his name. Very sweet. Oh, I guess, yeah, that is that all she does. That's all she does. As this is <laughs> happening, Xena and Balak are watching. And Xena, like, comes up to Balak and, like, squeezes his bicep and yep. then touches his chest and then walks away. Yeah. In a very, like, <laughs> come follow me so we can have sex on a horse sort of a vibe to this yeah. moment. It was very confusing to me personally, <laughs> and I'm still reeling from it. <laughs> <laughs> So Ebony's, you know, very, very sweet moment. I'm really glad that Xenon got a chance to see her. And she says that she'll always watch over them. So it's nice. We have this happy ending and yeah. and, and seemingly a future, you know, in a way for both the Amazon line and the centaurs. Right. Like, like a minimal, yeah. tiny bit of hope. <laughs> but it is interesting that, like, again, in, in season six where... You know, you're dealing with new religions taking over the old Greek pantheon, Mm -hmm. progression of the world. You have to get rid of Amazons. You have to get rid of centaurs. It's just because that's what happens. So what happens to this little family? I think I think they pass out of history and they do, unfortunately, because I mean, they might have like I said, it seems to imply that, you know, girls are not centaurs. So they might just birth, you know, females and the, and cent- the male centaur line dies, dies out, which is sad. But like, if it happens in, in a peaceful way, then that's just, I don't know, evolution. I mean, I don't know how peaceful a way it was because their granddad well, murdered yes, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Besides that, but afterwards, like they could have had like a million, not a million, but like, you know, 20 more centaurs and then they just, whatever. Who knows? I don't want to think about centaur sex and or babies. Well, all we know is that this episode's title is Last of the Centaurs. These are the last. Yeah, they. I mean, they literally are. Yeah, that's a bummer. It is sad. Um, well, okay, there, we have one more little scene here before the end of the episode, and it's Gabs and Zena leaving. What a weird-ass scene. And this is a little this bit of a... This odd. really strange. <laughs> This is like the episode trying to compensate for the fact that it wasn't interested enough in Gabrielle, uh, even though she was doing some pretty interesting things, like <laughs> asking Zena over and over to kill a man. Yeah. And, you know, here she's like, you know what? I'm glad you didn't kill him. <laughs> <laughs> and Zena's like, oh, LOL, are you now? I know. They're like joking about it. Yeah. It's so weird. Yep, it's just kind of like a hilarious, like, you love murdering, Gabs. And Gabs is like, I like I can be wise sometimes, lol. And, like, no one is actually dealing with the fact that, like, this isn't about wisdom. This yeah. is literally about, like, being a good person versus being a bad person. Jumping to murder someone. Like, as your first, you know, d- like, idea for yeah. what, how to resolve a situation, which, of yeah. course, is so Xena in the early seasons. And, yeah. But technically speaking, she should put Balok on trial and convict him for destroying this race. Yes. I mean, Balak did a horrible thing and he shouldn't just be allowed to go about his business. And maybe he won't. I guess the episode does kind of apply that he's sending off the family to go be happy and is going to I doubt it. I think he's going to live there and it's going to be fine. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Justice is still important, even if the person involved sees the error of their ways and of course we'll we'll get That's, into that real yeah, soon yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean i i think this is really the major problem with the episode is that it, ha- it 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 glances at this very important character conflict which is gabrielle's increasing you know violence and uh just kind yeah. of makes it into a joke, mm-hmm. and that that is really bad. And I'm gonna throw a coin in for it. You a road, he'd be dead. Burp, burp, burp. Yeah, <laughs> doop, 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 doop. That's lol. Basically, how that scene that's, goes. That's really bad. That should should not have been. And we didn't mention, but there was like this weird thing that Ephany brought up, like a weird prophecy. Yeah. Oh yeah. What was it's that never, uh, about? Maybe it's something we for- have forgotten. No. Yeah. Was there ever a prophecy I, about centaurs? No, there wasn't. But I saw. I guess it must have been Joel Metzger talking about. Maybe this was like a line deleted from the episode where where um, they go into a little more detail and say that the centaurs are, like, gonna, like, be reborn via the father, like, 
capital F father, and you're Whoa. supposed to think that that's like Xenon, but then it turns out to be Balak. I don't know. I, I was just confused. What? I was confused by. I all think it's Barias, <laughs> aka Baby Barias. Father. Oh. Yeah. Baby Bryce is going to father a lot of centaurs. Then. I guess I guess so. He's going to be potent. Oh, <laughs> He's steal all the women. <laughs> Throwing more coins. There was a really hilarious quote from uh, Jill Metzger that I wanted to read. I didn't really know what to do with the script. I originally wrote it as a drama, which is what they wanted. But the whole thing is about this girl who basically had sex with a horseman. So it's hard to keep that image out of your mind and take it seriously. <laughs> oh, no. I think that explains a lot about the script, yes. which is... You know, at points very serious, but then a complete goofball wrote yeah. it, I guess. It's just really, really funny because in this uh, interview with him, he just constantly brought up the fact that, like, once in a while you remember that this lady fucked a horse. Man. I mean, to be fair, that is exactly what goes on in all our heads as we watch it. Constantly. We, we sort of buy into the Steve and Nika relationship, and then we're like, oh my God. There's like this one, like, wide shot where they're, like, walking along together, and she has her hand just, like, on his, like, horse butt. It's <laughs> just like, help. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, okay. What can you do? Well, that's uh, <laughs> that's centaurs there for yeah. you. Well, I liked it generally speaking. Yeah, I really don't like that there was clones in between the, the two episodes. Yeah, mm. I mean, they clearly meant it to be like a palate cleanser, but obviously we don't need a palate I don't, cleanser. Yeah, I, would, I no. would prefer clones to be moved after so that you could have had these two dramatic prefer, episodes back to back. You can see yeah. the parallels between yeah, exactly. them more clearly. Yeah. No clones. No clones. Well, yeah, yes, just no too. clones, that please. Too, that too, that too, that too. Yeah, um, it's really harsh. It's really amazing. Uh, and I did enjoy it a lot more on rewatch. And uh, man, I love Baraez, a.k.a. Martone. I think it's right that it comes after Helicon, that you have the real like kind of grimness of Helicon, and then this has this more hope- yeah, exactly. hopeful yeah. ending. It, they work yeah. really well together. Yeah. And it's really interesting that they were supposed to be like one episode. And it's really interesting that it started off in Hooves and Harlots. Yeah. Yeah, these, so there. these two races have been intertwined all yeah. along. Get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's it, right? Anything else you guys want to say? I don't think so. Let's hear it. Just, I mean, we're, we're actually going to see Barias again. But, oh, we uh, are? Yeah, we will, but what? I... What? I don't you, remember this. Yeah, he's going to appear again, but I want to hear Vera. Come on, give us, <laughs> give us, give us a little bit. Uh, there's nothing to say about it. What? What? You don't remember Barias? No, when does he come back? Are you okay? (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) You want to keep that in? Yeah, we can keep that in. I now remember (laughs) Barias. I now remember it. I'm always focused on the Xena aspect. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. You're right, you're right. Okay, maybe we can save it for that. <laughs> save, save it but for But until the then, we just have a little bit of a Zina. Yeah. Uh, if that is all... I think so. Should we talk about the schedule yet? Or should uh, we, we save it? We actually should talk about the schedule. Okay. Yeah. Just so that everybody gets a little heads up. So this is now Last of the Centaurs. Today is June the 10th. Yes, that's what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, uh, what we are going to be doing is a uh, normal schedule two weeks from now. We'll post When Fates Collide, which we're all very, very excited wow. about. Yeah. Um, and Ooh. then to uh, just work with our schedules, um, make sure we're le- you know doing everything in a good spot, leaving everything in a good spot. Um, we are going to be taking July off. In terms of posting the main episodes, though, Patreon, there may be some things going on up in there uh, for sure. Um, And then we will continue with many happy returns in August. We're right. going to probably say this again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like we'll, we'll say it again. I just want get, nobody as, to be yeah. surprised. So we'll say it as many times as possible. But yeah, um, summer break, month of July. Maybe yeah. you can spend it, uh, you know, catching up if you're behind or right. like listening to some of your old favorites. Totally. Just so as you know, we are going to be doing a lot of work in July. We're going to start prepping for the finale 
Uh, so that's one of the main reasons Messed we up. are take, <laughs> yeah. taking well, that time that, off. That that and schedules, but yeah, yes. that too for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a major part of it. Uh, is uh, we we sense it coming, and we want to make sure we do the very best mm-hmm. podcasting we have ever yeah, done we'll for get it. Many heavy returns and sole position in August, and then like uh, everything else forever uh, in September. Or mailbags. Start thinking about yes. season six mailbags. We are stuff. going to be doing a, a mailbag for all of the episodes of season six, pr- except the finale. Except the finale, We're yeah. going to do a pre-finale mailbag. So start thinking about your questions now. Because... They, they should not involve the finale. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, but like, only, like, we're saying that not because we're not... We're, like, we're probably going to do, like, 300 just in the finale based on, like, I don't know responses and things but like it would be great to have an episode that isn't like overrun by questions about the that. finale. Yes. like we want yes. to talk about like the whole yeah the whole season and all these episodes before that so yeah if you have general season six questions uh feel free to start sending them to us and, yeah and, and, and of and course we'll like wait you. just a, a reminder mailbags are not specifically about just like the one season it could be about anything oh yeah totally yeah just not the finale just not the finale. <laughs> <laughs> Do not ask us questions about the finale. Yeah, but, we're, the, we're, but then we will do one for the finale. Yeah, we're going to do a post finale. You'll then. get your chance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, and then that's it then. So follow yeah, us on the stuff and the things. We're on uh, the internet, Zena, warriorpodcast.com, where you can find all the links to all of the things. We are on Apple Podcasts, where you can find us to subscribe and listen and rate with stars and leave reviews. We are on Twitter at Xena Warrior Pod and Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, Xena Warrior Podcast. The power. The passion. The, the podcast. podcast.